Hey guys, Kim here, and you are tuned into Kim E, the Diabetes MP, a place where nurse practitioners can come and learn more about diabetes and ways that they can improve their diabetes management skills. Now, today, I want to get into a very interesting topic for me. It was very interesting for me, so hopefully, it'll be interesting for you. Before I do that, I do want to ask that if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe ding that notification bell so you do not miss an upload this particular video is going to be a two-parter so this is part one next week I'm going to do part two so you want to make sure you that you don't miss that if you happen to miss the video from last week I talked about prescribing the right diabetic medication now I've been getting a lot of questions about okay what do I do if metformin doesn't work or what it what how do I go to dual therapy triple therapy how do I start insulin I've been getting a lot of questions over that and so I want to kind of start at the beginning and work ourselves forward okay now last year about this time I went over each individual drug class and I did like a quick overview over each drug class. I've made a playlist over that. So if you're interested in that, having watched that need to refresh your memory, I'll put that in the description box. But last week I talked about the considerations when you're trying to prescribe the right medication. But today and next week, I'm going to be talking about the ominous octet. Now, here's the thing about the ominous octet. It's ever changing because we also happen to have the egregious 11 that's on the horizon, the horizon, I mean. And so but today, really where we've been hanging out when it comes to the issue that I'm going to be talking about today, the ominous octet is where we're going to start. I'm not going to get into the egregious 11 because it's still kind of developing. But what I will say here is, what is the ominous octet? Well, basically, it's the eight dysfunctions that happen within the body that causes hyperglycemia, okay? Kind of like the reasons why a person would have high blood sugar. What is going on in the body? The main things that happen to cause that hyperglycemia. So if you're interested in learning more about this and what you can do about this, stay tuned. We're going to get into it. Now, let's talk ominous octet. Now, the thought about the ominous octet when it comes to medications is that if you correct the dysfunction, the defect, that you can correct the hyperglycemia. And here's the thing when it comes to medications medications, the different drug classes, they actually correct the different defects. Now, some drug classes correct more, more, you know, than one defect. Um, but this knowing what the different defects are will help guide you as to what medication will be more appropriate for the diabetic that you are dealing with at the time okay now the strategy is to tackle more than one defect okay now I'm going to get into the first four defects and kind of talk about that and then next week I'm going to talk about the last four now the thing with these defects certain medications depending on what it is they correct it now I'm not going to talk about that I do have something coming up where here in the coming months where I'm going to go more into um, the different medications and on a more deeper dive and to be quite honest with you I it's just too much to do here on YouTube because it takes some time to kind of kind of unpack that but if you are interested in learning more about that I'm going to put a link in the description box of a wait list of a you know when that comes out you would like to be notified of that and we will go offline off YouTube to be able to dive more in detail about that I try to be very mindful of my time and how long my videos are here and what I am planning what I got coming up will be more of like a course more of like a master class kind of something and if you are interested in being able to discuss it more and have more of a live teaching or more of an in-depth teaching you would definitely want to get on this wait list so I can email you when it becomes available. I'm working on it, trying to figure out like the best way to do that. So I'll go ahead and leave that link in the description box. Okay, defect number one, the decrease in insulin secretion. Okay, when you have a decrease in insulin secretion, 
you're going to have hyperglycemia. Okay, that's what hyperglycemia is going to result in. And this is going to primarily be in your pancreas. Okay, where is insulin produced from the beta cells? Okay, so with that first defect, that would be what you would want to correct. How can I get this pancreas to secrete more insulin? How can I correct that defect? Number two, decrease incretin effect, okay? Now that hormone that I just mentioned there, it's produced in the gut, in the, in, in the um, intestines, and when it's released, it's normally released after you have eaten, and it stimulates the blood glucose to go down. It decreases the blood glucose levels. There are medicines that actually um, help stimulate this effect. And again, this will be something that you can think about and work through, but that will be um, defect number two. All right, defect number three is increased lipolysis, okay? So this is the increase of fat breakdown. Now, this is different from exercise, okay? Because you know when we exercise, we're breaking down fat, burning it off. This is totally different from that. This is where there's an accumulation of lipids in the liver, the pancreas, in the muscles. And what happens is it actually makes, it worsens insulin resistance. Now I made a whole video over insulin resistance um, that talks more about what that is, but basically ultimately this causes a decrease in insulin secretion, okay? And so you would want to reverse this. You would want to decrease the breakdown of fat, okay? This is not what we would want to happen. So that is defect number three. Okay, and last point, number four, is increased glucose reabsorption. Now, here's the thing about glucose. Our bodies use glucose as an energy source, okay? And in a normal glycemic person, the kidneys will kind of refilter back in the glucose and then distribute it to where it could be used throughout the body. But in a patient that has diabetes, that has hyperglycemia, what ends up happening is the kidneys hold on to too much of that glucose, okay? And what happens is it's more than what the body can use. And then now you have an accumulation of glucose and hence hyperglycemia. And so with this defect, there's an increased level of glucose being and reabsorbed and so with the medication that you would choose for this would actually correct this by decreasing that reabsorption okay okay guys this was a quick video i try not to get too in detail because again like i said i try to be very mindful of how long these videos are, okay? I know everyone's busy and this is not the platform that I want to do a deep dive on because I do know that people view my content on different levels. Some people just need it as a refresher. Some people need a deeper dive and I get your messages. I get your DMs, your comments, your emails. And so just based off of just those things, the responses from people, I do realize that there are people who need more of a detailed deep dive and there are people who would like to go a little bit more in detail. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I am putting together something that's off this platform that would be more of like a course, more of like a class. And if you are interested in that, again, I'm gonna put the link for the wait list down. And when that is ready and ready to go live, I will email you and let you know when that is, you'll get first access to that. Because I also realized that for some people, this is just a review and you don't need any extra, extra talking about this or anything like this. And if that's you, you know, good for you. But there are people who need a little bit more or would like to discuss this a little bit more, you know, in detail. And that is what that would be for. Also, if you find yourself needing to refresh your memory on the different medications, because like I said in this, like I was mentioning in these defects, you know, when you're working through your process of what medication you would want to prescribe, 
it would be very beneficial to know what each drug class does and what it does to the body, to the system. And so again, I'm gonna put the link to the playlist to all those different medication classes. Also, if you don't mind, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, ding the notification bell so you do not miss an upload. I'm going to do part two next week. So you don't wanna miss that because I'm gonna give you the next four defects. And one more thing before I let you guys go. Let us never, ever leave a nurse behind. Goodbye, guys.